<sighs> How are you guys? Good? Good energy in the room. Who was at Mind Valley U last year? Amazing. How much of an upgrade is this, by the way? It was so good last year, and just when you think something can't get any better, you walk in this room, right? It's so amazing to be here and to see so many beautiful, familiar faces. And we're going to be digging into something today, which is maybe going to disrupt your reality a little bit. Would that be okay? By the way, am I in the right room? <laughs> and my intention really is to pull you into some places which are maybe a little bit unusual around the conversation we get to have. And I would love to go and actually give you some practical tools around how you can dive in and start to look at the energetic field that you have around you. And when we start digging into this, we're going to look at actually looking at what is in your field. How do we start recoding your field so that you can actually be more in this world and do more in this world so that you can manifest your ideal reality? Is this all sounding good, by the way? Yes? Are you sure? Okay, I know it's after lunch, <laughs> but let's keep the energy high in here, okay? So let's work out how to use the clicker, firstly. Hmm. Assistance, does that work? Oh, there we go. Okay, we're sorted, we're good. <laughs> so here's the thing, guys. If you have seen me speak before, maybe at the last Mind Value Year, or if you follow me on social media, you know, you'll see that I, I travel the world with my love, who was here for Wampa's talk earlier today. Right, amazing. So we do this work a lot individually and a lot together as well. And so I get to travel around the world. I get to truly create my ideal life and live my purpose. And I have a multiple seven-figure business. And beyond any of that, the thing that really gets me out of bed and excites me each and every single day is actually helping people do the same, right? And helping people create their ideal reality and whatever that looks like for them. And, you know, it's interesting because I think you can maybe go online and look at my life now and say, wow, you know, that's amazing, or you're so lucky, or that's so cool. And the big thing to know is that, you know, I didn't start out like that. I didn't start out sitting with my computer in a beautiful place in Bali and, you know, helping people and changing the world. There was a little bit of a journey there. And I want to take you guys back a step, firstly, before I take you behind the scenes of some of the work that we get to do today. And I want to share with you that, you know, I grew up in an amazing family in Auckland and in New Zealand. And this family was very much a family that believed in following the system, right? The traditional system of going to school and getting good grades and working really hard. And a lot of people might look at me now and say, you know, Regan, you're so clear on your vision. You're so clear around what you're manifesting and calling in. Were you always that way? You see, I got asked all the time as a child, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I, I never knew. I was never the girl that said, I want to be this, I want to be that. I didn't know. And so because I didn't know, I slotted into that system, right? And my dad used to say to me on repeat all the time, Regan, if I had your opportunity, I would have been an architect. Regan, if I had your opportunities, I would have been an architect. Regan, you know, if I had your opportunities, I would have been an architect. So what do you think I did at university, by the way? <laughs> really original idea, <laughs> right? I went to architecture school. And I started out really because I didn't know what I wanted to do, so I jumped into that. And I remember this lecture theatre, and a new lecturer walked in, there were about 300 people in the room. And I was sitting there, and the lecturer walked in, and he, had, he said something like, welcome future architects, welcome to your reality. We're gonna take you on a journey, and we're gonna take you through a visualization that is gonna allow you to see your life as an architect 20 years out from now. Now, I wasn't sitting in rooms like these, right? I've never done anything like that. So I sat there and I thought, this is cool. I started to close my eyes and I listened to his voice and I started to sink into my future. And what I saw in that visualization literally made me sick to my stomach. And I saw probably the worst case scenario of me being disconnected from my purpose, not living my dream life, getting in a place where I'd created a life because people had told me I should instead of actually connecting with me. And I had this moment where it's like my mind disconnected from my body and my body just kind of got up and ran <laughs> out of the room. And it was in that moment that I decided, I made a decision which changed the rest of my life. I decided that, you know what? I'm gonna figure out, firstly, why I'm here. And secondly, I'm gonna figure out how to get there. And so as a bold 17, 18 year old, I picked up the phone and who did I call? I called my dad, right? 
And I remember I was shaking and he picked up the phone and I told him, I just straight out said, Dad, I, I can't do it. I'm not gonna be an architect. It's not my life. It's not my purpose. I'm not gonna do it. And to my surprise, my dad turned around and said, well, okay, baby, you know, I, I want you to be happy at the end of the day, so I support you in that. And he then said to me, he said, so Regan, uh, what are you gonna do? <laughs> and I said, Dad, just give me a minute. <laughs> just a hot minute, right? And so <laughs> that threw me off into a crazy, beautiful journey. I went to Dr. Google, because that's what you do when you're my generation, right? Google has all the answers all the time. So I Googled, how do you quit your nine to five job? Right? I didn't even have one, but I was trying to get out of it. So I came across an ebook, <laughs> and the ebook was called something like what I, what I Wish I'd Learned at School But Didn't, right? It was by an Australian multimillionaire entrepreneur, Jamie McIntyre, and I ended up going to one of those seminars. It was a four-day wealth creation intensive, and there were a whole lot of speakers selling a whole lot of things, yelling a whole lot of things at the front of the room. And for the first time ever, I got inspired, and I thought, maybe there's a different way. And I did everything that the people on stage told me to do. I invested all the little money that I didn't have. I then invested all the other money that I didn't have by borrowing the money that I didn't have, right? And I went down a huge track of trying to figure out how do I create my dream life? Guys, it didn't start out with a vision of, I want to impact millions of people. It was literally like, how do I not be in a job? That would be my ideal reality, okay? And I got down this path where I was over $100,000 in personal debt, not for partying or travel, for coaching, for mentoring, for courses, for education. And my life wasn't changing at all. And I remember saying to one of my mentors at the time, his name was Simon, I said to him, you know what, Sai, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe I'm not meant to be successful. Maybe this isn't my path. Maybe I should just be an architect and be in a job. And he turned around and he said something to me which changed my whole paradigm. And he said to me, he said, Regan, you're so focused on the outside. He said, you're obsessed with trying to find the perfect strategy, the perfect way, copying how someone else did it. He said, Regan, and you guys should all write this down if you're taking notes, success is 80% your internal reality and then only 20% what you do on the outside. It's 80% your mindset, 80% your energy, 80% the work that gets to go on in your energetic field. And then from that place, we then take the aligned action, the strategic action. And he turned around and he said, Regan, how much work are you doing on the 80%? And it was next to nothing. Now that threw me down a whole different path <laughs> of NLP, of hypnosis, of energy work. I literally became obsessed with how do I alter my reality? How do I create my ideal life, but from within? And you guys had an amazing taste of that with Wampa today looking at how do you do that through embodiment. And what I want to share with you guys today is I wanna take you into a place where we start to literally engineer your field. I wanna take you through a process of energetic architecture. I've swept the architecture role, by the way, I'm now a different type of architect, <laughs> right? And I want to take you into this place where you start looking at, okay, what's actually going on in my reality? What's going on in my field? And how do I then start to alter it and play with it remembering that our external reality, our physical results are always a reflection of what's going on within, right? You see, I truly believe that everyone can have anything they desire in this world. You can have it all, you can have it all on your terms right now if you have the right tools, if you have the right energetic play kit to go and jump in here and start to play with. And I really believe ultimately that all of you are here for a reason. Each and every single one of you has stuff inside of you that's real and it's important and it needs to be shared with the world. And I really believe that that stuff isn't even about you and your life. It's actually about the people that you get to help and impact and inspire and raise up by simply digging deeper into your internal reality. Are you guys with me in this conversation? Okay, these guys are with me. What about you guys? Is this making sense, yes? Amazing, okay. So when we start talking about energetic architecture, what I wanna do with you guys is I wanna teach you the process, okay? I wanna take you behind the scenes of some of the high-level work that I do with my private clients in small, intimate groups. 
And I want to actually run a process with you that I've never done before in the sense of sharing it on a stage or on the internet or anything like that, right? Usually this is literally me one-on-one -on -one with someone. I want to teach it to you guys and teach you the components and then actually run you through it and actually get in the work so we're not just talking about it, but we get to create the shifts. Would that be a good idea? Okay. All right, so a few things you need to know is that when we dig into the playground of energetic architecture, you have many, many, many different tools. If I was to write them all out for you guys, there's probably over 50, okay? So when I'm working with people, I'm pulling from all these different places to quickly and rapidly get them their results. I'm gonna step you through 12 of these, okay? So I'm gonna give you not just like one or two, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna fit everything in. I'm gonna keep looking at this timer and I'm gonna keep going, right? I'm gonna fit 12 of them in for you guys. Each of them can be used independently. But at the same time, we're gonna do a process at the end where we stack them up, right? And where we get to go in to your field, into your rea reality, and create massive quantum change. Now you might be saying, Regan, what is this field thing, right? Some of you guys are like, yeah, I get it. Some of you guys are like, what's a field, right? Think of it this way. The field is the energetic layers around you. In these layers, there are codes, right? There are codes, there are patterns, there are waveforms. And all we're doing with energetic architecture is we're connecting to these patterns, these codes, these waveforms. We're giving them tangible form, and then we get to play, okay? This level of work is not about going into trauma and staying in your pain body for 10 years until you've finished suffering and then you break through, right? <laughs> this is not about actually going in and having it take 10 years to create any change. This is about quantum change. Guys, there's a new way of transformation and healing which is taking place in the world right now and it doesn't involve the lengthy processes. It does involve getting in, getting out, being super fast and intentional, remembering that we can shift anything with our own intentional. As humans, we are this powerful. Okay, are you guys picking up what I'm putting down here? Okay, amazing. So let's get into it. If the slides play, there we go, okay. So the first piece in your toolbox that we get to play with is really starting to open your field with intention, okay? So when I say field and when I say open your field, you might say, well, why is this important? Well, if the field's not open, then we don't have access to the patterns, the codes, the waveforms, the pieces of information that we're gonna play with when we actually do this process. Now, there's a couple of different ways to open your field, and the way that I love to do it is simply through intention, through dropping into the field of your heart, okay? There's a lot of people doing a lot of work out there internally, but they're doing it from here, right? They're doing it from their mind. They're doing it from a place where they're trying to control everything in their mind. And our mind is super powerful, but how many limiting constructs and belief systems and patterning and unconscious blueprints are going on in there? Like, there's a lot for most people. I know I certainly still have a lot, right? So the minute you drop into the field of the heart, all of a sudden, the geometry that we get to play with completely shifts because the heart is the heart. Right? It's not a conscious heart and an unconscious heart and a heart that was this and that and tra transforms into this and that. It's literally the heart. It is pure love. It is love of the highest vibration. So that means that when we drop in in this way, all the coding that we get to do that gets to take place comes from the place of pure love, not from judgment and not from mind constructs. Okay? Now we're opening it simply with intention. And if there was one thing that I'd love for you guys to realize right now is just remembering how powerful you are in terms of your own intentions. You know, my, my clients joke with me all the time and they're like, Regan, you're so damn intentional. And I'm like, why wouldn't I be? Why wouldn't I be? When I understand that intention is one of the tools that can completely shift everything that I'm calling in right now, okay? So what I want you guys to do is when I teach you these 12, I want you to actually bring this into your own reality as well. And I want you to look at some of the elements as we go through it relative to your life. And it's gonna be individual and different for you each, right? So when we run this, we're gonna run through the energetic architecture process and we're gonna use it in order to connect and ultimately manifest one specific thing into your reality, okay? So I want you to start thinking about that now. And it can be simple, it can be easy. I would recommend that you just make it really clear and tangible. You can literally jot it down right now and then you can just remember it when we actually go through the process, okay? Now, I would recommend it's something that you can actually measure, okay? For example, if you're saying, well, I'd love to manifest financial abundance. Well, what does that look like? Is that another $100? Are you now financially free? Oh, $1,000? No, okay, how much money is it, right? I'd love to be in my heart center more. Okay, well, how do you know? 
Okay, so you're making this outcome super clear and super specific, okay? Yes, you guys with me on this? Yeah, cool. The other component, which is important, is by when. Okay, we're going to use time. Often time uses us. We'll talk about that in a minute. But we're going to use time so we have a tangible construct to play with. So by when? And you can do this anywhere from now, literally the next couple of days, right through three months, six months, 12 months. Going beyond 12 months can be, you know, you need to push your system a little bit. It can work, but I would recommend that somewhere between in the 12-month period, okay? So you just jot down the, the date, right? The specific date. Okay, so jotting down what is that clear and specific thing that you can measure that you want to manifest and call in, right? And then the specific date by when. The next piece is being super aware of the now. You see, I see so many people stuck out in their future. And, and it's kind of in the name of I'm doing the work, right? You know, I'm connected to my goals, I'm connected to my vision, but they're really disconnected from where they're at right now. Okay, and we're gonna use processes of time travel when we start actually getting into this architecture process when I step you guys through this. And so we can't travel through time unless we know where now is, right? We need to come back to now, we need to start it now, we need to be present to the now, okay? So see how simple and easy this is, right? You guys start to stack it up. So even this, it's like, okay, cool, I understand. I have this thing that I wanna manifest by this date. Okay, well, here's my reality right now. Here's where I'm at. If it's a money thing, here's what's in my bank account, you're super clear and you're super aware of it. Now the key with this, guys, is to have full awareness of it, but be completely unattached to it at the same time, okay? There's the other people that are like super present about their now, but they're super attached to their now. They're like, I can't manifest that because look at my now reality. I can't manifest that right now because have you seen what's going on in my bank account? Have you seen my relationship? That would be impossible. Right, so all they're doing when you do that, by the way, is you're literally taking that energetic blueprint and by giving it voice and vibration, you're copying it on repeat into your field, into the future, right? Yes? Right, which is why people get stuck in these loops, which is why people plateau and they don't change because they're aware of their now but they're obsessed and kind of connected with their now, thinking that it affects their future. Okay, unlink them, <laughs> separate them out. We wanna be, as Wampa says, passionately unattached, passionately clear about where we're at, but completely unattached because it means nothing in regards to where you're going. If you look at your bank account as an example and X amount of dollars in there right now, all that is is that is a reflective number of all of your past decisions and beliefs and actions stacked up into that present moment. It's got nothing to do with where you're going. This process, however, has everything to do with where you're going, okay? So, the next piece of this is to deeply intention where you desire to be. Now, you might say, well, Regan, didn't we do that in the first step? Yeah, we're clear on it in the sense of what are we manifesting? But when I say deeply intentionalize where you desire to be, I literally mean that you get to get into a dream state with it, okay? You know, as humans, guys, we're natural manifestors. It's our natural state. It's one of our amazing superpowers that each and every single one of you have. And so when you start remembering this, we start looking at the process, right? And the process of this, quite simply, is to get a picture in your energetic field that is so clear and so specific of exactly what it is that you're calling in that you get a place where you look at it and you dance with it and you feel it and you feel like you can touch it and you can taste it and you start seeing around the corners with it and you start seeing all the details of it and you notice that you're wearing that thing and someone says that and you get into this place when all of a sudden you start walking with it and talking with it and dancing with it and holding it in your field and then as you're walking and talking in your now, you're not sure for a split second if it's in your dream state or if it's in your now. Who's had that, by the way? Right, and other people might turn around and go, you know what, you're crazy. How dare you dream like that? How dare you dream that big and that specific? Have you seen what your life is like at the now? Get real, get back into the now. But you don't let it sway you, right? You go, you know what, I'm actually still out here. I'm connected to the energetics of this, remembering there is no time and space. And as a construct, we get to collapse it and pull it into our physical reality. And then all of a sudden, as you're connecting with this vision and you're not sure if it's a dream or if it's a reality, there's that moment where you wake up and you open your eyes and you're like, oh, oh, this life. 
all of these elements, oh, I saw that. I dreamt that. I visioned that. I saw that in so much crystal detail. And here it is, right? Who's had an experience like that before with something they've manifested, right? This is our natural state, and you get to do it over and over and over again. And you get better and better and better at it as you go, okay? So the next layer on top of this, quite simply, is increasing your capacity to receive, okay? You need to increase your capacity to receive. You need to expand your capacity to receive. So all of your dreams, all your visions, all your manifestations, everything that each and every single one of you wrote down before for step number one, all of it is just energy. All of it is patterns, waveforms, codes of information, right? All of it. So if we can simply have it all in our field through the process of intention, then why does it not show up in the physical instantly? And sometimes it does. But why does it not when it doesn't? Well, quite simply, think of yourself like a container, right? You only have the ability to catch the energy that your container can hold, right? So if there's all the money, all the things, all the love, all the everything that you desire, and your container is really small, then you can't energetically hold on to it, right? So this process around expanding your capacity to receive, we start shifting into this place where we get to catch the energy and it gets easier and easier and easier. So one of the things that I love to do with this, we just talked in the last step, right? Around connecting in with your manifestation, connecting with your vision, getting into detail with it, seeing it so clearly, seeing all the pieces line up. From this place, if we want to expand that, I get people, and we're gonna do this when we run the process, I get people to drop into that vision and see it through their body as if it was there now, right now. So if you were walking and talking and acting and living in that vision because it was your now point, then what would your vision be, right? And all of a sudden your mind's like, I just thought of my biggest thing and wrote it down. Like what's even beyond that, right? And your unconscious mind, your field, your body, your energetic layers, everything starts to shift. Everything starts to expand. Everything starts to go, oh, hang on. Well, if that was my vision, then my vision wouldn't be that. It'd be the thing beyond that. What's the thing beyond that, right? And all of a sudden, your field opens, your channel opens, everything starts to increase, which means you can hold more, which means if you do the work that Wampa talked about in his talk, you can then embody more, right? Are you guys seeing how this fits together? Yes? Okay. So again, we're gonna run you through that process when we do this around, okay, great, how do we actually expand this so you get to receive more through this vision? All right. So there are lots of people that get to this stage and they have these tools and they're working and they're looking at their vision beyond the vision, right? And they're expanding their mindset and their field and it feels really good, but they get a little bit stuck, right? They get stuck and all of a sudden they turn around and they're like, Regan, but it's still not in my physical reality. It's still not in a place where I can see it and touch it in the tangible now. And this is where we get to go in and release limiting structures that are holding us back, okay? Now, when I say limiting structures, I'm talking about codes and energy in your field that does not serve you. I'm talking about codes and energy in your field that is not yours. I'm talking about fear, I'm talking about self-doubt, I'm talking about sabotage, I'm talking about telling yourself on repeat, I am not enough, it's a program. All of these things running in your field are programs. Just like a computer has different programs, these programs are running, okay? Now, I'm not gonna go back to the beginning of time and tell you why they're there, <laughs> but just know that they're not your programs. If you're not sure whether something is yours or not, ask yourself, is this from God? Is this my highest self? Is this me and my highest vibration? And if the answer is no, then it's not yours. It does not belong to you. However, if it's in your field, what we don't get to do is go, well, that's not mine, and just numb it and ignore it. Oh, I'm just gonna be fearless, have no fear, have no self-doubt, I believe in myself. That's not gonna work either, right? If it's in your field, even if it's not yours, you have a responsibility to shift it. You have a responsibility to transform it. You have a responsibility to dissolve it 
out of your field, knowing that we're all one, we're all created. So every time you do this in your field, you're dissolving it for the planet. You're dissolving it for humanity. You're dissolving it for every single other person that's energetically connected to you right now, okay? How do we do this? We do this with intention. We do this with direct commands. We do this with simply making a request. A request that the fear be dissolved right now. A request that the structural limitations in my field that do not serve me, that are not mine, be banished. I allow them to dissolve instantly. Yes, it can be this easy. Again, we could do a process for 10 hours and go into your fear and feel it and do all this stuff, or we could just do this. <laughs> Who would like the easier option, right? <laughs> awesome. So, when we're doing this and when we're removing these limiting structures and getting them to dissolve out of our field, it can be a little bit like trimming the tree, right? So you trim the tree and eventually some of the branches may grow back. However, if you combine it with this next step, what's gonna happen is instead of trimming the tree, you're actually going in and you're gonna pull out the roots, okay? We're gonna actually get the tree and pull it out, okay? So when we do this, we're talking about transforming distortion into a gift. Here's what you need to know in your field. You can have distortion or you can receive the gift, but you cannot do both. You can have distortion in your field or you can receive the gift, but you cannot do both, okay? Distortion of not being enough. Distortion of being worried about what everyone else is going to think. Distortion of a certain vibration that you're holding in your field that is lowering your vibe. Remembering that frequency is our currency. And if our own vibration is low, it's altering the field around us, which is then putting us in a lower frequency. And then the world reflects back exactly that. So if we reverse engineer that and go, well, what is my life right now? What's going on in my physical, tangible life, my results? Does that feel good? Does some of it feel good? Does some of it feel really not good? Okay, what frequency is linked to that? How is my vibration in my field linked to that? And if we were to go in and simply transform this distortion into a gift so it can be of my benefit, then all of a sudden now we get to play, right? All of a sudden everything starts to shift and transform and we get into this place where it's like, oh, yes, okay, I can actually use this instead of having it block me and stop me. One of my earliest mentors <laughs> said to me, you know, I was, actually, I was probably about three years into doing internal work at this point, but I was like obsessed doing internal work, like every day I was going for it, right? And I was looking to, to call in a certain level of income in my business, and I remember saying to her, it's not working. The internal work is not working. <laughs> I was like, I've done everything. I've removed every limiting belief. I've got rid of every structure. I have no more fear. I, there's nothing left to do. <laughs> and she turned around and she said, Regan, I'm going to repeat your own words back to you. Here they are. <laughs> she said, if there's something that you're looking to call in in your physical life, your physical reality, and it's not here in your now, right now, then there is distortion stopping it. And I turned around and said to her, yeah, but there's no more distortion. You don't understand. I've removed all the distortion. It's gone. She said, Regan, being humble enough to not, not being humble enough to see your own distortion, that's distortion, right? And it was like, oh, okay, humble down. Okay, what's the next layer, right? This work never stops because we continue to evolve, okay? But the deeper we can go in and look at it and the faster we get to shift it and transform it, that's when magic starts to happen. I was working with a client recently and we were digging into some of the distortion around her field, around not being enough, okay? And we were digging into this and what's interesting is that she'd had chronic pain in her stomach for 30 plus years. Now I was, I, I think I knew about it, but I was pretty unaware of it at the time. We weren't trying to heal the pain, right? We were simply looking at, okay, why do you feel that you're not enough? We went and did the process that I'm gonna do with you guys. She's now pain free. Now. That took like three minutes, right? And I just share that so you guys see how powerful this really is. The pain was being stored in her body due to a vibrational distortion in her field. The minute we shifted it and transformed it, all of a sudden, she gets to use the gift and release the distortion. Remember, distortion or the gift, you cannot have both, okay? So, is this good by the way? Are you guys feeling this? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> I'll keep going then. So <laughs> the next piece that we get to look at is we get to recode new structures in your field. Often when you get to this part of the process, it's, it's kind of usual to feel maybe a little bit empty, 
right? Because all of the patterns that have been in your field and in this place for so long, you get to this place where it's like, oh, now there's, now there's emptiness, okay? And this is a very usual thing for people to say to me when they're in this process, Regan, I feel, I feel really empty, I feel really empty. Now, we've been told by society that emptiness is bad and it's wrong, right? And that, oh, why are you feeling empty? Okay, you better go and feel full somehow, right? The emptiness is amazing. The emptiness is a gift. The emptiness means that space has been created. All of a sudden, there's space in your field. We have room to move. The structures have broken away and dissolved themselves. And from this place, we get to play and we get to go, so what do I want to now put into my field? What would actually serve me? Once again, through intention, I request that codes of total self-confidence anchor into my field. I request that codes of total self-love and self-worth be now present. I request that codes of absolute infinite abundance be locked in right now. And I request the codes be locked in in a way where I get to have so much fun just being me in the process. All of this is a choice. All of this is intentional and you get to choose what codes you wanna map in when we actually do this, okay? Now, there's an interesting piece which comes after this, which many people can get super, uh, I guess, held up on if they don't understand that it can be really fast and intentional. And that is going in and getting your inner child on board with this whole process, right? So we all have an inner child. We all have a little boy, a little girl that we once were and still are, right? And the thing is, is that if your inner child is for some reason under the illusion of struggle or suffering, then that's gonna affect your field because there's no time and no space. It's all linked. So that's gonna pull forward into your now, which is then gonna affect the results that are reflected out in your physical, right? Now. There's a lot of people that would say, okay, cool, we're gonna go in and we're gonna do this inner child healing and we're gonna cry about it for 100 hours and then finally when we get the tears out, then maybe when a child's gonna feel okay. And that's one way, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying there's a faster option available. What if it could be quantum? What if it could be instant? What if through the process that I'm gonna take you through allows you to go back through time travel into your moment in time when your inner child, for whatever reason, felt not loved or not enough? because that's the core of all of it. And remember, if we're going to the root, if we're going to the core, then from this place, that's where we get to play. From this place, that's where we start to then give that child in that moment exactly what he or she needs, exactly what she required, that she maybe didn't get in that physical moment in the past, right? And from that place, reintegrate that child energetically back into your field so that you can be a more integrated whole. And then of course, the world is simply gonna reflect more integrated results back at you. Is this making sense to you guys? Yes, okay, perfect. So after we do this in the process, we're then gonna look at calling in your highest self, the highest version of you. Again, can you see how you could take each just one of these and spend hours <laughs> going deep and deep and deep in them? But again, I'm gonna layer this up for you guys when we do it so you can have as much amazing transformation as possible. So the big thing to know is that you have all versions of you available to you at all time, okay? And I feel as humans on the surface, we understand this and we know this, right? Because ultimately you can wake up um, one morning and you can stub your toe and you can wake up and, and, and you're in a bad mood for the rest of the morning and then you drive to work and then you have a car accident. Like You see how it goes, right? And it's all because of your vibration. It's all because of the identity in that moment that you're choosing to embody versus someone waking up and stubbing their toe and going, okay, cool. Well, I'm gonna choose to have an amazing day. I'm gonna choose to be my best self in this moment. And if we can catch it, we get to do a quantum shift around reconnecting to a different version of ourselves. And you see so many people in society guys have it backwards because they're in a place that they think, well, when I do this in the physical, when I get that in the physical, when I create that in my physical reality, then I'll be that person. Once I make the millions of dollars, then I'll be the millionaire. When I'm in the amazing relationship, then I'll be totally in love. Guys, the higher self comes first. It comes first. Remember your world is always reflecting back whatever's going on within, whatever's going on in your field. 
You know, I remember a moment, um, I think I was about 19, and I was at, I was at um, a personal development wealth creation event, and I, I made friends with some of the speakers, and, and one of them said to me, hey, Regan, you know, you should, you should come along to our, to our speakers' party this evening. Um, and that was like a dream for me. You know, I was like, wow, what a gift to be, uh, you know, around successful people in this environment. Now, I was still at university at that time. <clears throat> I was seriously in debt. I did not know my purpose. Uh, I really had no clue, direction, or results in my life. That's just where I was at. However, I was committed to the vision. I was committed to creating something a little bit different. I remember I got dressed up, right, and I turned up and I I walked into the event and I felt absolutely terrified. I I literally walked into the room and I I felt like, oh, 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 I I don't belong here. oh, look at these people and look at who they are and I recognize them from the stage and I've seen what they've created and that's not me, that's not me. And there was a moment in time where I had a choice, right? I had a choice to let my lower self win and I wanted with every part of my body to, to run out of the room. But I made a different decision. Instead, I was like, okay, let me just be the highest version of me that I have available. And that wasn't easy for me at the time because I didn't know what this now future Regan version looked like, right? I felt like I didn't have anything to connect to. I couldn't even see it. And I thought to myself, okay, I'm just gonna walk around the room and I'm just gonna find out how they did it. I'm just gonna ask them more questions. I'm gonna interview them all. (laughs) I'm just gonna ask them, how did you start your business? How did you create success? What do you do in the morning? Do you have a mindset routine? I was just gonna ask them everything, right? And I thought if I ask every person in this room all of those questions, by the end I'll have the answers. I'll know what to do, it'll be easy, right? So I focused on that all night, even though I felt not enough to be in that room at that time. (laughs) And I went home later that night totally confused, (laughs) totally confused, had no strategy on how to do it. And I remember I was feeling frustrated. I remember I was pacing around my room and and, and I thought to myself, man, you know what? I I really don't get it. I don't understand how these people have done it because they've all done it differently. They're all saying they do different things. They're all making their money a different way. They all have different businesses. They're all different, so I don't even know what to do. So I remember I asked myself, I was like, okay, what is like the one common thing about them? What are the things that are the same? Because I was focusing a lot on what was different about them. I asked myself, what what is the same about these people? And all of a sudden I was like, oh, they, they kind of walk the same. They do, they were walking the same. I thought, okay. And I thought, you know what? Their shoulders were all the same. Their shoulders were, were kind of back, right? The shoulders were back and I, I noticed that their heads were the same, like their chins were high when they walked. And, and I, I noticed they had a certain feeling when I was around them that felt the same. And I thought, well, why, why don't I just do that for a little bit, right? And I thought, why don't I just try on this stuff? Why don't I just try on being the millionaire version of Regan who was totally in debt, broke student, not knowing how to make money, version of Regan. Why don't I just try it on? Right, and I started walking with it, and I started talking with it, and I started asking myself, well, how would this version of me think? How would this version of me act? What would this version of me do each and every single day? How would this version show up? What is this version committed to? These are good things to write down, guys, by the way. (laughs) What is this version of me committed to? What, What is this version of me no longer committed to? What kind of people is this version of me around? What kind of people is this version of me no longer around. How do I fuel my body? What do I put in my body? What's the vibration of my energy? Right, and I started playing with this stuff. Guys, I literally created the multiple million dollar version of Regan long before any money showed up. And people would have thought that I was crazy. They would have been like, can you not see where you're at? You are delusional. And some people did say that, and I'm like, ciao, you just hit my, you're not in my world vibration, right? So it's learning to dance with this, it's learning to play with this. And through this process, we get to connect with the highest version of you and anchor it into your field so that you have access to it at any moment. So at any moment, you can walk with it and talk with it and be it before the physical actually shows up, okay? So, how are we doing? Are we good? 
And then this is a lot, but I'm like, I'm just going to give it all to you guys. <laughs> I'm going to push the boat out with it. So the next piece that is important is let's talk a little bit about time. Understanding that time is a construct. It doesn't exist. It's actually an illusion. I could stand here and talk for like five hours just on why all of that is possible. However, with the time we have available, let's just talk about how to play with it. Okay. You have different timelines running in your field at all different times. You have timelines anchored back in your past. You have timelines anchored out into your future. I'm not a believer that this is your one timeline and this is your destiny and this is your past and now you just have to surrender to it. No, you get to create your reality. You get to design your life. You get to make a choice each and every single day. What timelines you pull in, what timelines you live into, are you actually being the highest version of you to embody those timelines? Which timelines do you instead choose to sidestep and remove from your field, okay? And when we do this in the process, we do it all with intention, once again. We simply notice, because these timelines will shift automatically when we go through this process, right? We simply notice the timelines shifting out of our field that no longer serve us. We simply notice the new timelines being anchored in and when you guys nail this and when you really understand how to go deep with this and play with this, you start creating a life that doesn't make any human sense to any other normal humans. <laughs> and you start creating a life where people go, how'd you do that by that age? How'd you do that in that time? But that's impossible in your business. You just did that. How could you? Timelines, right? Time travel, intention, shift, remove. Guys, all of this is play. It is divine play. I feel like so many people get so serious with this stuff. And instead, I literally feel like every day, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Let's just remove that and pull that in and bring that in here. Like, can you see how fun this really gets to be when you, yeah, right? Cat knows. She's like, yes. <laughs> when you really begin to dance with it, right? So in the process, we're going to collapse the timelines that no longer serve us. And automatically, new ones are going to start shifting through that, okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to time travel out to your future, Okay, and we're going to take all the work internally in your field that just got coded and recoded and dialed up and tuned up and upgraded for you guys. And we're going to take that intentionally and pull it out into your future, traveling through time, traveling to that specific date, right? That specific date and time. And we're going to lock it in. Now, what's interesting <laughs> is that when you start playing with this stuff, magic really can start to happen. One of my mentors that I worked with deeply around um, timelines and, and shifting timelines and a, a, lot of, a lot of that part of the process um, was really his work and, and going deeper into this. And, and I was just blown away, really, with how deeply he was using this. Um, and he, in his, in his spare time, when he wasn't speaking, he would play the guitar, right? And he fell off the stage at one point, completely sober, but fell off the stage just because he was having so much fun. And he broke his leg, right? And we see it online. This was, this was probably about six or seven years ago. And I'm like, oh my gosh, he broke his leg. And then three days later, he's up and he's running. I'm like, how are you running? <laughs> Isn't your leg broken? And he's like, yeah, Regan, yeah. I just, I just jumped back and I opened my field and I collapsed the timelines and I just rewired them and I bought in the timeline where I didn't break my leg, right? Now, what's even cooler, because you might be like, oh, okay, really, is that he had his scans from the emergency room. And so just for fun, because this is who he is, <laughs> he went back to the emergency room. He said, can I see the scans? The scans with my broken leg. And they're looking at him, and he's walking. <laughs> and they said, sure. And, and they go, and they pull the scans out of, um, of the drawer. The bone is not broken in the scans anymore. Right? Huh. Right. So when you're collapsing timelines, <laughs> <ooh>. <laughs> yeah, now we get to play. <laughs> when we're collapsing timelines, it doesn't just shift in your physical body or your physical field. You're shifting the field around you. You're shifting any events and circumstances that are linked into that, right? And so from this place, we start to anchor the result out into the future. Right, and this is exactly that. Some of the process around what he did is he's like, yeah, I just redid the timeline stuff, and then I just did the future stuff around locking in the running and the walking without the break in the leg, with the fully healed leg, going through into the future. Okay, so I'm going to run you guys through that, and then the last piece of this, which is deeply important, is to close the field and seal it with gratitude. You heard Wampa say it before: gratitude is the highest vibration. 
Okay, it's the highest vibration. It's the vibration of the heart. And if you're looking to call in anything in a high vibration, then this is the vibe to be in, okay? You can't manifest what you're calling in unless you're deeply, deeply, deeply grateful for your now. So through the process of the time travel, we're gonna come back to the now and we're gonna lock in the gratitude vibration, which is generally pretty easy after you've gone through this process, you feel pretty good through it. So it's not a hard state to access, okay. So, are you guys with me? Okay, good. Let me give you a really quick recap if in case you missed one of the 12, okay. Opening your field with intention, right? Being aware of the now. Intentionalizing where you desire to be, right? Expanding your capacity to receive. Going in and releasing any of the limiting structures that are holding you back. Taking the core of the distortion and transforming it into a gift so it actually serves you And then we start to recode the structures in your field. We start to bring in the codes that we desire that are actually going to serve us. Then going back in time to instantly heal your inner child and do this layer of quantum healing that's relative, of course, to the manifestation that you're calling in. At that moment in time, anchoring in your higher self, right? On your way back to the now, we're gonna collapse the timelines that don't serve you. We're gonna notice what's different. We're also gonna allow the future ones to shift and readjust. We're then gonna lock in the manifestation or the vision into the future. And then from that place, we're gonna seal it up with some love or gratitude, okay? So the question is, do you guys wanna do this? Okay. (laughs) All right, okay, well that was lucky. So (laughs) there's a few things that we need to make sure this runs really smoothly for you guys individually. Firstly, connect with your manifestation, okay? Just remember, clear and specific, easy, tangible goal, and by when, you need the date, okay? Easy, totally easy. And so the next piece that we get to look at is I want to just start getting you guys aware of your field, okay? So this is really easy. Um, We're gonna do it before we start the main process, but just go ahead and pop your notepads and paper down and just make sure you're comfy in your seat. This is a closed eye journey for the rest of the time. So we're just gonna do a little bit of a setup process now. Perfect. Cool. Oh, you guys are getting like real comfy. (laughs) Perfect. Okay, so we're simply gonna set up your field and we're not really set up your field, we're gonna set up your awareness of your own field. Have you aware of it? It looks different for each and every single person, okay? So the big thing to know when we drop into this process is that you may see things, you may feel things, you may hear things, you may do none of the above, but it's all perfect, right? For those of you who were at my Mind Valley You talk last year, um, this is like the up, up, upgraded version, right? <laughs> this is like the next level of what we get to play with, okay? So the big thing is no attachments. You can't mess this up other than not surrendering to it. Okay, so if you're in a place where your mind comes in and starts going, this is crazy, or is it working, or what am I gonna eat for dinner? Like, just catch it and be like, okay, that's my mind, awesome. And allow yourself to bring yourself back to your own breath and tension and being in the space, okay? Even if you're not seeing stuff or feeling stuff and you're like, I don't know whether it works, just know that this is coded medicine, guys. It goes directly into your unconscious, into your subconscious, and beyond that into your field, working energetically. It's instant shifts. It's instant change, right? So the only way you can screw it up is like fighting it (laughs) and being like, I don't know if it's gonna work. Well, yeah, it probably won't because that's what you're putting in your field, okay? So it's really about surrendering. So on that note, let's practice. I want you guys to go ahead and close your eyes if you're not already. And simply have awareness that you are now at your now, okay? This is your now point, this is your center, this is your current reality. From this place, go ahead and simply float up above your now. That's it, super easy, just float up out of your body, float up out of your now, and turn your attention towards your past. Good. Now go ahead and float back into your past, just float back and you, you may see some unspecified events, you may see moments in time or feel moments in time that you remember, you may see nothing, you may see things that you're unaware of currently in the physical, it's all perfect, that's it. 
Good, now continue to float all the way now back to now, bringing your attention back to now, floating all the way forward, that's it. All the way back to now, hovering above now, and turn your attention now out into your future. That's it. Now go ahead and simply float out into your future. Don't worry about where it is in relativeness to your past, but just float out into your future. You may see different events. You may feel vibrations. It's all perfect. It's all welcome. Have a look at your beautiful future. And from that place... I know some of you guys want to hang out here, but let's do the process in a minute. Let's turn your focus back to the now, floating back all the way back to now, coming back down into now, back into your body, back into the room, and now you can open your eyes. Okay. Is everyone good with that? Just give me a yes if you're good. Easy, right? So easy. Time travel is the easiest thing ever. It's like a best amazing human superpower that no one knows they have, right? And you literally get to jump in and out of these time frames. So that's the structure of your field that we're going to be working with. You guys can do this at any time at home by yourself, right? You can literally drop in and go back and start playing with these elements, okay? So you guys ready to do this? Okay. Perfect. Go ahead and close your eyes once again. Settling into your body, settling into the space, having full conscious, subconscious, and unconscious awareness of your field right now. That's it. Setting the intention that this process be so fun and so easy and so rapid, so quantum, as you allow yourself to simply connect with that one specific manifestation that you wrote down earlier. That's it. Taking a moment to call into the space any divine guidance that you personally request be with you on this journey. And now dropping your awareness from your mind simply down into your heart. Ah, <sighs> that's right. If at any moment you feel yourself back in your mind space, you can just imagine your mind jumping in a little elevator or a lift and just simply dropping down, dropping down, dropping down from your mind, from past your shoulders and into your heart. That's it. Allowing this code of medicine to drop you into a place of deep transformation that is deeper than anywhere you have shifted in before, allowing everything to shift and transform with total ease, with total grace, with total flow. Allowing this beautiful manifestation to be actualized and intentionalized into your physical reality on or before the chosen date and time and allowing it to sync up, inviting in any divine synchronicities, any divine surprises that you get to experience along the way in full alignment with your divine plan, in full alignment with the highest version of you, so that ultimately you can be more in this world and do more in this world and serve to the greatest capacity that you're here to serve. Having full awareness right now of your current now in relation to this manifestation that you're calling in, that's it. And with curious childlike eyes, we see this manifestation and we notice that it has absolutely nothing to do with what is going on right now. We're simply aware of the now, but vibrationally we are connected to the manifestation. That's it. Go ahead right now and pull up a screen in front of you. Allow the screen to simply float in front of you. It may look like a computer screen or a movie screen. It's all perfect. And I want you to see yourself actually achieving that manifestation in the moment, physically manifesting it. And I want you to look at the detail around what's going on, who's around you, what are they saying, what's going on, what are you saying to yourself? That's it. And I want you to simply notice how divine and how perfect and how easy this manifestation really gets to be. Good. 
Go ahead and make any adjustments that would make this picture absolutely perfect for you right now. You'll have a chance to come back to it later down the track in this process. But for now, just get it looking absolutely perfect. Good. Now go ahead and jump into the movie screen. So you're actually in the screen. Now you're looking at this manifestation through your own eyes. That's it. And you're noticing what you're saying to yourself. You're noticing what you're hearing. You're noticing the feeling, the vibration of being you in that moment, literally achieving that manifestation with so much ease, with so much grace, and with so much flow. That's it. Now from this place, noticing everything that's around you, go ahead and pull up a screen. So now there's a screen because inside the screen because you're in the screen, right? So go ahead and pull up another screen. And from this place, I want you to ask yourself, well, considering I'm living into my vision, what is my vision right now? That's it. And in that moment, as you're literally dropping into that manifestation, see yourself achieving the vision beyond your vision in the screen right now. That's it. Notice exactly what's going on. Notice how perfect it gets to be. Go ahead and make any adjustments to make it look, sound, or feel absolutely perfect for you right now. As you notice the emotion and the vibration of what it feels like to be you in the screen right now, achieving this manifestation as you're literally watching yourself achieve that next manifestation in the screen right now. That's it. Good. Go ahead right now and simply jump out of the screen. That's it, jump out of the screen, have awareness of the screen. We're gonna come back to it in a minute. But for now, when you connect to that screen and when you connect energetically to that manifestation, that vision that you're connecting with, go ahead and simply bring your awareness to any limiting structures that in the past have held you back from truly dropping in with this manifestation, from having this manifestation show up in the physical right now. That's it. Notice the structures of the fear. Notice the structures of the self-doubt. Notice the structures of telling yourself that you're not enough or it needs to be like this or you need to be like that. Notice all of it, all of it that's relevant to you. If you like, you can even visualize these. You can visualize them as ropes or ties around the screen or disconnecting you from the screen. Whatever it looks like, go ahead and give it visual form. That's it. Allow yourself to see these limiting structures which have held you back. And from this place, go ahead and simply command that these limiting structures now dissolve. That's it, dissolve them. Dissolve them out of your field, out of your reality, dissolve them for humanity. They're not yours, they've been imprinted upon you at some certain time and they no longer serve you. We do this with gratitude and with love remembering that all of these structures were connected into your field at one point because there were lessons attached to them. We remember, we remember, we remember that they are not ours, but that we do get to dissolve them right now so our field is open and so our field is clear. Any last piece of structure that gets to dissolve, go ahead and simply command that it dissolves right now. Notice we do not cut or blow it up or do something drastic because then that creates a reaction cycle of it coming back. When we dissolve it, it is done. It is gone, it is shifted. Let it go with ease, with grace, and with flow. That's right, good. Go ahead right now and tune into your body and notice the limiting structures that used to be in your field. Notice where they were felt in your body. It may be your chest, it may be your stomach, it may be anywhere in your body. Just tune into wherever that place is. We're connecting now with the core of these distortions. Remembering that these distortions were imprinted on your field and they have not served you and they are no longer there. We're releasing and healing the core wound of where these came from. That's it. So from this place, tuning in to wherever it is on your body right now, go ahead and simply give that feeling a physical form. Maybe it's a ball, maybe it's a square, whatever it is for you, go ahead and give it physical form. What does it look like? Go ahead right now and continue to notice the color that this form, this object has. That's it. Now from this place, take that colored object 
and simply request that it moves out of your body. That's it. Let it go. Let it shift out. You may feel it shift out. You may see it shift out. You may do none of the above. Just know it is shifting right now. And as you hover this object in front of you, go ahead and allow it to now spin. That's it. Spin the object until it, until it starts changing color from whatever color it was. That's it. Continue to spin it. Spin it faster, 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 faster. That's it. Spin it up, spin it up, spin it up until it becomes a blur of white light. That's it. And from this place, surround the spinning blur of white light with golden light, with golden energy. That's it. Allowing this once distortion to be instantly transformed into the most beautiful gift that you are aware of right now. That's it. And from this place, allow this golden ball of spinning white and gold light to come back into your field, back into your energy body, back into your emotional body, back into your physical body, allowing it to anchor in your heart. Ah. Oh. As you let yourself receive all of the gifts that you were unable to see before. As you allow this gift to now literally break up and explode through your body, activating every cell of your system with the gifts of golden light, allowing all of this light to flow through your system. That's it. As you drop into the bliss of how good it is to receive all these divine gifts in the moment. Through this whole process, through all these gifts, you start to remember. You start to remember who you are. You start to remember who you are. You start to remember who you are. And from this place, activated with golden light through every cell of your body, we get to go in and now we get to recode. This is where we get to play. This is where you get to ask yourself from this clear and open and expansive place, what do I desire to have in my field? What codes of patterns of information would serve me in connecting with this manifestation and having it show up with so much ease, grace, and flow? That's it. Make the request right now that the new codes be brought down into your field and be anchored into your system. You may just make that simple request or you may request specific codes that you desire. Maybe you request the code of confidence, of ultimate confidence. Maybe you request the code for divine love to be activated through your system. Maybe you request the code for divine abundance to flow through every part of your being. Maybe you just make the general request that all the codes that you desire and require right now be brought in. They're being locked in, they're being locked in, they're being locked in. As you feel your field start to shift and re-anchor and recode itself, you may even feel parts of your physical body recoding in this process. You may feel nothing, either way is just perfect as we surrender and allow these new codes to jump in. Ah, oh, that's right. Good. From this place now, go ahead and ask yourself, when was the very first time as a child that you felt either not good enough or not loved? And whatever answer comes to your head, if it's above the age of seven, ask yourself again and go back earlier. Whatever age comes to you will be just perfect. Maybe you were two, maybe you were in the womb, maybe you were four. I want you to go ahead right now and float up above your body, float up above now, just like before, that's it. And go ahead and start to float back, all the way back, that's it. Float back through all the timelines, through all the moments in time, back, 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 that's it. Float all the way back until you're there, in that very moment where that little version of you was experiencing something that made them feel not enough or not loved. That's it. Go ahead right now and simply notice what's going on. See the world through his eyes or through her eyes and let yourself feel a little bit of what they felt in this moment. Yeah, that's right. I want you to go ahead and give this little beautiful child 
exactly what he or she needed in this moment, that's it. You can hug her, you can love her, you can hug him, you can love him, you can tell them how important and beautiful they really are. You can tell them that it's okay, look what really happened in this situation. You can let them know that they're safe. Whatever it is that your little child needs right now, go ahead and continue to give it to them. That's right. And when that starts to shift a little bit and feel more complete, go ahead and and lean down or hold or look this little child in the eyes and go ahead and let him or her know how special they really are how important they are, how much they matter. Let them know that you have come all the way back from your future just because they're this important, just because they're this special, just because you wanted to be with them in this moment right now. That's it. Let them know that the beautiful future lies ahead of them and that they're gonna make it at least this far. Show them some of the gifts. Show them some of the magic. Show them some of the beauty. Let them know what's actually available. That's it. And from this place, you can sit or lie or hold this little version of you, connecting with them and allowing that to reintegrate into them and into you simultaneously. Go ahead right now And we're gonna call a third energy into the space. This energy is your higher self. Go ahead and invite your higher self to now be present in this field with the little version of you. You may see your higher self, you may feel it, you may just know that it is present, it is just perfect. Inviting your higher self to come in and integrate in and show you the true essence of the highest version of you. That's it. Remembering that this version of you is a version of you that's simply on a time construct operating in another dimension, another moment of time. And just like you went back for that little boy or that little girl, well, this higher self has come back for you. And as you connect to your higher self, with so much love and so much gratitude. Go ahead and invite your higher self to integrate into your heart center. That's it, just invite your higher self in. Allow it to shift into your field right now, into your body right now, that's it. Allow it to fully lock into place and anchor in knowing that after this moment, this version of you will be available to you at any given time. Knowing that at any moment, you will be able to access the highest version of you with the highest vibration at any given time. That's it, good. Go ahead right now and either say farewell to that little child or You can also invite that little child to jump into your heart as well, whatever feels best for you. And once you are complete, go ahead and float up above that moment. That's it. Float up with your higher self and your inner child integrated. And hovering above that moment, just before that moment, look down on that moment. Look down on that scenario. And from that place, Go ahead and choose that. And as you make that choice in that moment, you now look towards your now and you notice that from this layer of the past, looking towards your now, you're noticing the timelines shift and adjust and shift and adjust and shift and adjust and reevaluate themselves in light of what just took place and the integration that just took place in your past. That's it. Notice timelines instantly dissolve and collapse that no longer serve you. Notice timelines drop out of your field that are no longer relevant. Notice new ones pull in in order to greatly stabilize your future with unconscious and energetic learnings and lessons that you are now able to pull from 
as all of this shifts and reevaluates themselves in light of this work. That's it. Good. As you're noticing all of these shifts and readjustments continue to float back all the way back to now until you're hovering above now and looking out towards your future, notice the timelines are doing the same thing, shifting, readjusting, reevaluating themselves in full support of your highest self, in full support of you being in the highest vibration, of full support of this manifestation which is now getting locked into your future. That's it. Good. Turn back to that screen that's hovering above now. That's it. Connect with that screen. And from this place, from this energy in your field, having released distortions, having literally released structures that in the past were limiting you, with your higher self anchored in, with your inner child on board with this, from these eyes, have a look at that screen. That's it. Notice what's going on in that movie. And you can't help but notice that there's now a dial that's appeared on the side of the screen. And as you go ahead with childlike curiosity, you reach out and you begin to, to shift the dial and you notice that this is the brightness of the movie. And so go ahead and crank the brightness up, turn it all the way up, 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 until it's so bright that it's almost white light and you can hardly see anything anymore. That's it. Now go ahead and turn it down, dim it out, that's it. Take all the light out of it, out, 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 out. Completely black and white now, darkness. Now go ahead and turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up until this image looks totally perfect, totally bright, totally real, exactly as it is as you see yourself locking in this manifestation in that exact moment on the movie screen. That's it, good. As you continue to notice, there's a second dial that's appeared on the side of the screen. And as you reach out for this one, you start playing, you start turning, you turn it up, and you notice that this is the saturation. That's it. And you turn the saturation up, 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 becomes brighter and brighter, more and more saturated, almost looks like you're in a cartoon. That's it. And now turn it down, desaturate it, take all the color out of it until it's black and white. Good. Now go ahead and turn up the saturation, that's it, turn it up, turn it up, until it's absolutely perfect, totally real, exactly how it's meant to be, as you watch yourself achieving this manifestation in the screen right now. Good. Notice that there's a third dial, which has now come onto this, that's it. A third dial, which when you reach out to it, you start to play with it, and you notice that this is the volume, that's it. And as you're aware of all the sounds around you and all the sounds internally in your own head, I want you to go ahead and crank up that volume, that's it. Crank it up, crank it up, crank it up until it becomes so loud, it's almost unbearable, that's it. Now turn it down, turn it down, turn it down. Till it's just a whisper, that's it. A tiny little whisper, inside and out. And then now turn it up, turn it up so it's absolutely perfect the perfect volume for you right now as you watch yourself walking in this divine manifestation in the screen right now. That's it. Good. And you can't help but notice that there's a fourth and final dial that now appears. And as you reach out to this one, you get a hint that this is the feeling dial. That's it. And as you notice the feelings start to accumulate in your body of how good it feels to be you achieving this manifestation in the screen right now, I want you to go ahead and crank this dial up. That's it. Crank it up, crank it up, turn it up. And we're not going to turn this back the other way. We're going to leave this on full blast, right? That's it. Crank it up, crank it up, crank it up. Feel it through every cell of your body. That's it. And just when you think it can't get any more powerful or any stronger than this, go ahead and double the emotion. That's it. Let it double the emotion running through every single cell. And then from this place, go ahead and allow yourself to triple the emotion. That's it. Let it run through your system. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Perfect. Run through. Triple it, triple it, triple it until it's totally real, totally ecstatic, feeling so amazing in this moment right now. That's it. 
from this place. From this place, I want you to go ahead and actually pick up the screen in front of you. You're gonna raise your hands and hold the screen in front of you and allow it to vibrate in your hands. That's it, that's it. Physically hold your arms up and have the screen in front of you and notice how good it feels, by the way, to be holding the screen. Notice the life force, vital energy, which is flowing through the screen right now. Notice how real it feels, how vibrant it feels. That's it. And from this place, we're gonna go ahead and simply float up, that's it, float up, holding the screen, noticing how vibrant and amazing it feels, and you're gonna float out towards your future. That's it, go ahead and float out, 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 continuing to see all the timelines shift and readjust and reevaluate themselves until you're flo- hovering just above that very moment in time, that specific date, that very moment in time, that date which you chose that this manifestation is gonna be locked into place, right? And so from this place, have the screen vibrating in your hands in front of you and with all your heart and all your intention, go ahead and drop the screen down into your reality. That's it, allowing it to sink and float and ultimately lock in to place exactly where it gets to be in this moment. Allow it to sink in and stabilize all the magic, all the intention all the energy as you see that screen click perfectly into place on that exact date. That's it. And from this place, hovering just above that moment and just before the moment, from that place, looking down on that event now locked into your future, go ahead and choose that. Go ahead and choose that reality. Choose that moment. Good. And with so much gratitude, allowing yourself to begin to float all the way back to now, only as quickly as you can stop and notice the timelines once again shift and reevaluate themselves in light of this new manifestation. Notice the divine guidance, the divine support that has showed up for you in your future because of what you chose in your field. Notice the synchronicities that now appear where you have them in the physical and you look back and go, oh yeah, I kind of knew that would happen. Uh Uh-huh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Notice your higher self being totally present in this journey, totally connected in full support of you living into your highest vibration of this truth that was just locked into your future. Notice your inner child and how safe and supported and a part of the process that they get to be, allowing you to have so much fun with this, allowing you to play with this, allowing you to remember that it's all just a child's cosmic game at the end of the day. That's it. Notice how quick you are to catch any limiting structures or any elements of distortion which pop into your field in the future. Notice you now have an awareness where you can catch it, where you can see it, and where you can remember. That's not mine, but I choose to shift it right now. And notice as you reflect on yourself, connecting back in these moments in your future. Notice that you constantly continue to remember who you are. You 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 remember why you were here. You remember why you were here. You remember who you are. That's it. And coming back, floating all the way back to now, hovering above now, coming back down into now, remaining in the field of your heart, remaining in your body with so much gratitude for what just got to take place in your field, with so much gratitude for what just got locked into your divine future. For so much gratitude for the reconnection to how powerful you really are. With so much gratitude as you continue to remember from this moment forth exactly 
where you are and exactly how fun and easy it all gets to be. Allowing yourself to sink into your physical body. You might want to wiggle your fingers or your toes. Bringing your awareness back past your body into the room, back into the space. From this place, you can gently start to open your eyes. Ah. Good work, team. (laughs) So proud of each and every single one of you that felt so open and you felt all so available. And remember, you can play with all the pieces and have fun with them. So thank you so much, guys. It's been an honor. Thank you. (laughs)